Hello, I'm Deborah Wursu of DebraWursu.com. Today I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to set up a machine for free motion stitching. My machine is a little larger than a basic domestic machine, but its functions are the same. It simply has a few more bells and whistles that serve to make my stitching process a little more streamlined. However, they are actually not must-haves for free motion stitching. Stepping off on the right foot by setting up your machine correctly for free motion stitching is going to make a huge difference to your work right from the start. While fabrics, stabilizers, hoops and so on are all important for thread sketching, thread painting and free motion quilting, it is absolutely fundamental that your machine is set up correctly before you begin. Follow these easy guidelines and you will indeed prevent many problems later. The first thing to consider is where you are sewing. You want good light and a large flat surface on which to place your work. I work in quite a contained area and fortunately most of what I make is not extra large, so I can manage with the flatbed table attachment for this machine. If I'm ever working on something larger, I do have facilities for creating a larger flat area around the machine. Not all machines can have a flatbed table like this fitted, but if you're working mainly with smaller quilts or artwork, then you can still manage even with a domestic machine. It's perhaps just a little more awkward. I managed for years and years with a very small domestic sewing machine with no flatbed table and simply got used to it. I'm very much a make do with what you have type of person. Alternatively, a sewing table with a recessed hole for the machine to sit in is a great option if you have one. What type of presser foot you're using is the next thing to consider. Many new machines come with a free motion foot included with the attachments, and some with more than one. Generally, presser feet are variously known as a free motion foot, an open toe or C foot, a closed toe or O foot, a darning foot, and a hopping foot. The two most common feet for free motion stitching are the open toe or C foot, or the hopping foot, with its spring loaded mechanism. and the closed toe or O foot. I also have this echo quilting foot, which I use occasionally. In order to fit your free motion foot to your machine, you need to remove the standard foot that's on the machine and attach the free motion foot. Refer to your sewing machine manual for instructions on how to do this, as machines do vary. And in most cases, it's a very simple process of taking one off and putting the other one back on and tightening the screw again. And the foot I've attached here is the open toe foot. Next, we look at the stitching plate and feed dogs. I like to use the stitching plate with the horizontal opening below the needle, as I do a lot of free motion zigzag stitch. The feed dogs are the little metal teeth located below the stitching plate underneath the needle. For free motion stitching, these need to be lowered so that they no longer rise up and down as you stitch. It's the rising up and down that moves the fabric along when doing regular stitching. Machines will either have a manual switch to lower the feed dogs or an electronic button. Moving on now to threads. For most thread sketching work, I use 40 gauge rayon embroidery thread in the top of the machine. Any good quality brand should be appropriate, though some are better than others. You can use a lot of thread when thread painting, so if your machine can handle the large spools, they generally work out more economically than buying lots of small spools. As with most things, you get what you pay for, so purchase the best thread you can that is readily available where you live. There are many great brands available. I really love this King Star thread, which is available locally for me in Australia in large spools and it's available in 600 colours, so it just has a fantastic range. But I do suggest you use whatever is locally available for you, because this brand will not be available in every country. When it comes to bobbin threads, you have some options. You can use a dedicated bobbin thread. Once again, there are a number of different brands available. These bobbin threads are generally quite a fine gauge, between 40 and 60 weight, making them economical to use. 
They are also available in a wide range of colours, so it's easy to select a shade that tones with your top thread. And using the same thread as in the top of the machine is very safe. You'll be much less likely to have problems with the bobbin thread being visible if your tension is not quite perfect, as the exact balance of weights between the top and bottom threads mean you will probably not experience many tension issues. When threading both the bobbin and upper threads, do refer to your machine manual for instructions. So while the basic functionality is the same, each brand and model of machine is likely to have some differences. Looking now at needles, which brand should you use? Needles are something of a personal preference, and also what suits your machine. Some machines like certain brands more than others. As with thread, however, do buy good quality needles. I generally use embroidery needles for most of my thread sketching, thread painting and free motion stitching, and my favourite brand is Schmetz. Size varies according to what I'm working on. Once again, your sewing machine manual should be offer some guidance about needles. For most free motion work, I find that needles ranging from 75 over 11 to 90 over 14 are the most appropriate. And never work with a dull or worn out needle. This will only lead to tension problems and fraying threads. Turning now to stitch length and width, in most circumstances set the stitch length to zero or as close to zero as it will go. My machine will only go down to 0 0.2. And if your machine is an older or more basic model, I also suggest setting the stitch width to zero. However, on most mid-range modern machines, this is generally not necessary. When beginning to free motion stitch, set the needle to always stop in the needle down position if your machine will do this. Begin by inserting the needle into the quilt sandwich, take one stitch and pull the bobbin thread through to the top of the fabric. This will prevent ugly thread tangles on the back of your work. Then insert the needle again and work a couple of stitches on the spot to secure the ends before you begin stitching. When you reach the end of the area being stitched, once again take a couple of stitches on the spot before cutting the threads. By doing these things your free motion stitching will not unravel later on. My machine has an automatic thread cutter, which is one of those bells and whistles I was talking about earlier. But you know, a pair of scissors works just as well. Occasionally you may need to change the thread tension, although for most thread sketching and thread painting, I find that this is rare. If your machine is well maintained with regular servicing, it will be a happy, smiling machine and will not growl and grump at you by messing up your tension. The occasions when you may need to alter the tension occur when using, for instance, a heavy top thread and light bobbin thread, or when working on certain types of fabric. But for most general free motion work on cotton quilt sandwiches, there should be little need to change. If you find you're still having problems, then always check that the machine is threaded correctly and that you're stitching at an even speed, that is, not moving the fabric too fast or too slowly in relation to the sewing speed. And while you're checking that, also check that the bobbin race under the needle is not clogged with fluff, as this will play havoc with tension very quickly. And to finish off, I just want to talk about controlling the speed of your stitching, as this is vital to achieving a really great finish. But do remember that this can take some practice. Coordinating your stitching speed, foot pressure and fabric movement are a little tricky at first, but with just a tiny bit of perseverance, you'll be creating wonderful, even, free motion stitching in no time. Think of this coordination rather like driving a manual car, where you need to coordinate both your feet for the clutch, brake and accelerator, and your hands on the steering wheel. Do you remember back to the time when you were a learner driver? It wasn't easy at first, was it? Sometimes the most tedious part of any creative process is the initial setting up. But in this case, it is worth taking the time. Your work will thank you for it. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to your company another time. For more tips and tutorials, and loads of videos, please visit my website at debrawursu.com. And if you'd like a free, detailed, and illustrated PDF copy of this presentation, 
just join my free resource library at deborahwersu.com. Thank you again and I'll see you another time.